Welcome for the fourth discussion in thyroid diseases and today we'll be discussing a multinodular toxic goiter. The last discussion was on a multinodular euthyroid. So this lady was uh, close to 60 years uh, had this lump for uh, over 10 years but she came uh, to our clinic because during the last six months she has noticed that she is losing her weight of course uh, it is very obvious that it's a multinodular goiter but uh, we asked to swallow and it moved upwards it confirmed and the weight loss it's a sign of uh, thyrotoxicosis and she also said she has excessive sweating and some uh, tremor so clinically symptomatically she's uh, toxic and then we have to examine to confirm the morphology and also the physiology of the goiter. So feeling the lobes, uh, it was a multinodular with more dominance on the left side and there were no palpable lymph nodes. Then again we could get below uh, when she swallows she moves up we could get below the lump for but for double confirmation percussion was done and feeling the carotids they were felt her pulse rate was 120 beats per minute and also she had a tremor there was no brewy heard. We looked for eye signs, and these are the eye signs that we are looking thyrotoxicosis, and she had none of them. There was no lid retraction, there was no exophthalmus, and the eye movements were normal, and there was no chemosis. Most of the time, these eye signs are most of the time seen in Graves disease, and also eye movements. Uh, we checked as I said earlier it was normal so the clinical diagnosis is a toxic multinodular goiter there's no retrosternal extension but when we felt the trachea there was a slight shift to the right side the, with the left side being dominant so a mere clinical diagnosis and the confirmatory investigations are straightforward as we have discussed earlier so the full thyroid profile was done and both T4 and T3 elevated with a lower TSH. Ultrasound confirmed that is a multinodular goiter and there was no retrosternal extension. There were no suspicious nodules and therefore we didn't do FNAC and also because there was no retrosternal extension we didn't do a CT. So we have now confirmed a multinodular with toxicity. And as I discussed earlier, there are only two principles. Remember in the management, everybody needs medical management. And then the nodular goiters needs ablation. So we started on pro, uh, and uh, carbosol. And uh, as I discussed earlier, the treatment methods, we started on a dose according to T43 and after one month we reviewed the thyroid function test so you can titrate the doses the other way I discussed which some people may use in a large goiter like that like this is a block and replacement where you give a high dose of carposol with a physiological dose of thyroxine but anyway we were happy to close the monitor and do a titration and then in the clinic she was happy because she was uh, gaining weight and uh, the tremor had disappeared she was feeling more comfortable the excessive sweating was not there and the repeat thyroid functions they were normal so then as uh, I pointed out earlier so medical management you have got the patient control and the person needs ablation so there are two forms of ablation possible one thing is surgery the other one is radioiodine ablation and in the case radioiodine ablation will not be effective because it's a very large goiter so you can't get a functional ablation 
of a such a large mass of iodine and also by the due to the pressure symptoms anyway person needs a thyroidectomy so and it's a multinolular so therefore we uh, did a total thyroidectomy on this patient and immediate post-op care as I discussed earlier of course monitoring and then they can be fed early mobilized early and uh, and also one point until the uh, day of surgery the carbamazole has to be continued and uh, just couple of days uh, before the surgery we did a T3 T4 which is normal because it's absolutely essential that the person is fully euthyroid prior to surgery because on, uh, if you operate on a toxic patient there's a risk of pushing the patient into thyrotoxic crisis so after the surgery carb muscle has stopped there's no point it will not act the entire gland is removed and anyway you have to stop carb muscle after your surgery so you, we stopped and of course we started on a dose of thyroxine we initially started with thyroxine 125 after, after one week, uh, patient came to look at the histopathology and it showed evidence of a toxic benign goiter. And then six weeks later, we did a TSH to titrate the uh, thyroxine dose we are going, giving the TSH was in the mid-range. So we continued on 125 and I advise the patient to come annually to the clinic to get a TSH level done. So to sum up, a person with a large multinodular goiter, toxic, so we have managed medically and once the patient is youth thyroid, we have done a total thyroidectomy. In contrast, if you get a patient who has a small multinodal goiter with toxic, first you have to confirm with your thyroid function and scan and your initial therapy will be the medical management and then the ablation is a small gland like this you can do radioiodine ablation. So anyway, initial therapy will be medical management with the carbamazole and propranol. And once the patient is euthyroid, we will arrange for the ablation. And because it's a small gland, you, one can uh, do radioiodine ablation. That's better because uh, you will not undergo the complications of surgery, the risk of soft surgery. Rather. So for the radioiodine ablation, we stopped the carbamazole for two weeks and got the patient slightly uh, toxic uh, range where the, the hyperfunctioning cells are again active and when you give the radioiodine, uh, the toxic cells will take the iodine uh, preferentially and there will be preferential ablation. And after the therapy, you don't give anything, you don't start thyroxine or carbamazole, but after four weeks, we did the thyroid function. We were the full assay and they were normal. So we knew that it's a successfully ablated and patient is euthyroid. So you don't have to give any form of treatment. But every year it's important to do the thyroid profile because there are late cases, there are possible late cases of hypothyroidism because it's a slow destruction. Sometimes later person may become hypothyroid in which case you have to start on thyroxine. And this follow-up has to be lifelong because even very late cases of hypothyroidism can happen. So to sum up, a small multinodal goiter uh, with toxicity has to uh, control medically. And then uh, because it's a small goiter, your ablation is with radioiodine. And for that, you stop the carbamazole for two weeks and then. And then uh, you have to, in our patient, it was a successful ablation. Successful in the sense the toxicity has, uh, has uh, disappeared and also the desired effect of the patient being euthyroid was there. But in case, some cases, if they are overablated and they, they, they show hypothyroidism, of course, you have to start on thyroxine. In case the ablation is not adequate after two weeks, you can do a second ablation. And if second ablation also fails, of course, the patient will need, uh, because it's a multinodal goiter, a total thyroidectomy. So this is how you manage multinodal goiters with toxicity. Again, two principles, medical management and ablation. And for a large goit ablation is total thyroidectomy. For a small goit ablation could be radioiodine ablation.